Hello and welcome to another episode of Chem in 3. In today's episode, we look at order of reactions, taking a look at zero order, first order, and second order reactions. Then we also look at the difference between order and molecularity. And finally, we end up with a three question quiz. So you need to watch all the way to the end of the lesson. Let's move in and take a closer look. One simple reason for studying about order of reaction and molecularity and all of these technical terms that we use in kinetics has to do with ease of communication. For instance, with this enzyme catalyzed reaction here, where hydrogen peroxide decomposes to produce water and oxygen in the presence of a small amount of the enzyme catalase. We can say here that the initial rate follows first order kinetics, meaning that as the concentration increases, so does the rate of the reaction. But then at this point here, where you have this concentration of peroxide or substrate, the reaction becomes zero order or an increase in concentration is no longer accompanied by an increase in the rate. And here we say that the reaction follows zero order kinetics. Here we have the decomposition of ammonia in the presence of a tungsten catalyst at high temperature. This is classified as a zero order reaction, which means that the rate of the reaction remains constant even when the concentration of ammonia is increased. But we also say that this reaction has a molecularity of one because it's a simple process of decomposition involving one molecular entity breaking up into its products. Molecularity can only be determined from a single equation and it is based on the number of reacting particles that must collide. And if you have no particles actually colliding, then the molecularity for a case like this would be one. Because the rate is constant, then we can say that the rate of this reaction is equal to some value k, which we are going to term the rate constant. And then the units of this rate constant would be the very same units of rate, which is moles per unit of volume, moles per dm cube per unit of time second. A zero order reaction, molecularity of one, graph to represent a zero order reaction, and the units of the rate constant for this zero order reaction. Another reaction. This one, the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen, but without a catalyst. This reaction also has a molecularity of one. Never mind the fact that the balanced equation has a two in front of the peroxide, but in this particular reaction, a decomposition is happening and only a single molecular entity determines the appearance of the products. So it is classified as having a molecularity of one. The fact that it's a first order reaction means that as you increase the concentration of hydrogen peroxide, it has a direct effect on the amount of products. And we end up with a graph like this. Peroxide increased, a direct relationship with the rate. It means that the rate constant K multiplied by the concentration is equal to the rate. Then the units of K can be derived using the units of concentration. The moles per dm cube per second and the units of concentration moles per dm cube. So dividing rate by the units of concentration means that moles per dm cube would cancel with moles per dm cube and we would simply end up with per second as the unit of K for a first order reaction. And now we consider this reaction is a second order reaction and its molecularity cannot be determined from this equation. So this tells you that molecularity cannot always be determined from one single balanced equation. There are cases where it can be determined in this way, but in a case like this one, where the reaction takes place in multiple steps, then each of those individual steps that go into the overall reaction must have its own molecularity. But overall, this reaction is a second order reaction because when experimental data is collected, it shows that the rate of the reaction is related to the square of the concentration of NO2. And this gives us this rate expression. Rate is equal to K multiplied by the square of the concentration of NO2. It means that the units of K can be derived by dividing rate by the concentration of NO2 squared. And that cancels and comes to this final answer. Unit of volume, dm cube per mole per second. This would be the unit of K in a reaction that follows 
second order kinetics. So what we must note therefore is that reaction order can only be determined experimentally. And while you might think that the balanced equation could tell you what the reaction order is, and there are cases where it would work out that way, there are many cases where you have multi-step reactions, and it's important to note that you do not determine the order of reaction by inspecting the balanced equation, and you can only determine the order of a reaction using experimental data. Molecularity, on the other hand, can only be determined after the reaction mechanism has been fully understood and summarized. And for reactions that have many steps, each step would have its own unique molecularity. And the molecularity refers to the number of molecular entities that must collide in this particular step of a reaction. So when hydrogen peroxide decomposes into water and oxygen, it's just one molecular entity and it's a unimolecular reaction. Each elementary step in a multi-step reaction has its own molecularity. But for single step first and second order reactions, we can easily say that molecularity is always equal to order. But not all reactions are just a single step. Looking here at the overall process, this first step where two nitrogen dioxide molecules combine to form NO and NO3, this involves two molecular entities. So this particular stage of the reaction would be bimolecular, or we say it has a molecularity of two. And because this stage is the slowest one, it's the one that actually determines the rate, or it's the rate determining step, then we can see that the rate of the reaction is related to this one reaction. The determination of the order of the reaction can only come from experimental data. But when a summary like this is presented to you, and this stage has been identified as the slow one, the RDS, or the rate determining step, then we can say that this reaction follows second order kinetics. But second order reactions can also look like this. Here we have ozone reacting with a chlorine atom to form ClO and O2. And this reaction has been found experimentally to have a rate that is directly related to the product of these two concentrations. And this, when graphed, looks like this. The units of this would be the same as any second order reaction. And this reaction, this one single step, would be bimolecular, molecularity of two. Another way of finding the order of this reaction is to look at the order with respect to the chlorine atom separately from the order with respect to the ozone atom. And you'd find that when you increase the concentration of the chlorine atom, the rate of the reaction goes up with a directly proportional relationship. And a similar thing happens for ozone. So the reaction we can say is first order with respect to chlorine and first order with respect to ozone. And then we can also see that as a combined reaction, first order plus first order gives a second order reaction. Or we can say that the product of these concentrations is related in this way to the rate, and that too would give a second order reaction. Now let's go into the textbook and have a look at some questions. As the bromine concentration is doubled in this column and the nitrogen two oxide concentration is kept constant, the rate quadruples. But when the bromine concentration is constant and the nitrogen two oxide concentration is quadrupled, the rate remains the same. So this tells you that the rate of the reaction is independent of the concentration of nitrogen to oxide, but it's related to the concentration of bromine in a square relationship, which means that C would be our answer, that the rate is equal to some constant multiplied by the concentration of bromine squared, because when this is doubled, this is quadrupled. And therefore, it means that this reaction here is a second order reaction. A student determined experimentally the rate expression to be rate is equal to K multiplied by the concentration of the thiosulfate ion squared. Remember that the order of a reaction can only be determined experimentally in any case. And here, there's this relationship where the square of the concentration multiplied by constant is equal to the rate. So this is typical of a second order reaction and this is the graph that would correspond to such a relationship. And now I would like you to consider these three remaining questions.